Welcome to our channel. We are Technic Force and we help grow your business online. Please hit the subscribe button to get more updates. How to use Google Calendar. How to use Google Calendar effectively for beginners. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll show you guys how you can actually use Google Calendar effectively because managing all of your appointments, schedules, and more in a third-party platform can be so difficult. And Google Calendar is super efficient to use. A lot of people don't even realize the power that it holds. So I'll break down step by step. First things first, you'll need a Google account to use Google Calendar. If you don't have one, go ahead and create one. They're free to use and straightforward. Once you have a Google account, you can access the Google Calendar by typing calendar.google.com into a web browser. You can also access it from your Gmail, which I find it to be the easiest method. Just go to Google Apps and click on Calendar and it will open up in a new window. This is the default view, and it is weekly view, but you can change it to suit your needs. This is what it looks like in a monthly view, and holidays in Philippines come pre-filled in the calendar. You can change it to 4-day view, a 1-day view, but I find it easiest just to stick with the weekly view, since you do have that little smaller monthly calendar on the left. You want to add an event to your Google Calendar. You can go up to Create, click Event, and then I find it easiest to click on More Options to open this up in a bigger view. This is where you can name your event. Choose a start and end time, which will determine how long your meeting is. If it's in person, you can add a location. If it's virtual, you can add a Google Meet link. This is also where you can add a description for your meeting. And the description box is also the best place to paste a link from a different video conference service like a Zoom link or Skype link. You can also send alerts for your meetings in the form of an email or a notification. And you can even add multiple if you think you might need multiple reminders for meetings. And here's what it looks like when you get a notification reminder and an email reminder. Depending on your browser, you might need to allow notifications to pop up. So if this window pops up, click continue to allow notifications. To invite other people to your event, if you click on guests, all you have to do is type in their email address and click enter. And you can also change the preferences that your guests have. So if you want to include them being allowed to modify events, or if you don't want them to be able to see who's invited or coming to an event, you can change that here. And then once you save your event, you'll have the option to send them an email. If you want your event to repeat, you can use this drop down here. And there are tons of options you can do daily, weekly, monthly, annually, and you can, of course, do custom as well. So you can set it to repeat by weekly, every three weeks. You can change the days that it repeats on. And you can also choose when the repeating event will end, either with a date or after a certain amount of occurrences. If you want to stop the repeating event, you can just choose does not repeat. And you can also make all the events if you don't have a specific time in mind. You can just click the all day button and the all day events will show up at the top of the calendar since they don't have a specific time slot. You can also share your calendar with coworkers or family members if you want them to be able to see your calendar and your schedule as well by clicking the three dots next to your calendar and going to settings and sharing and scrolling down to share with specific people or groups and adding their email. I also wanted to show you what it looks like when you receive a Google Calendar invitation to your email. So you have these options here, yes, maybe, and no. And then more options where you can propose a new time or add a note. So if you select yes, it will be automatically added to your calendar. If you select no or more options, you can send a note explaining why you can't make the meeting. and then click send. 
A great way to organize Google Calendar is keeping separate work and personal calendars. So I'll show you next how to add a new calendar by going to other calendars, clicking the plus sign, and then you can name your calendar. So this will be my work calendar. And then click create calendar. So now you can see I have my lovely work and just lovely calendars in my calendars list. And if there's a calendar over here that you don't want to be visible, if you click the three dots, you can choose hide from this list and then you won't see it in your my calendar section. You can also change the color that your calendar is displayed as by clicking the three dots and then choosing any color from this list or creating your own with a plus sign. If you want to unhide a calendar, go to settings and on the left hand side, you'll see all of the calendars that you have access to. And birthdays was the one that we had before. If we click the eye, it will unhide the calendar. And as you can see, it's now showing up in our My Calendars list once again. You can also create tasks in Google Calendar by going up to Create, clicking Tasks. And in this test, let's just say we want to review a presentation and we have to review it by 3.30. We can click Save and it will now be added to our task list, which is right next to the calendar icon in Google Calendars. If we click on that, you'll see all the tasks that you have listed. You can also access your tasks through your Gmail on the right-hand side. There's the task icon again, and it will pull up your tasks so you can check them off here. And if you want to see what tasks you've already completed, go back to your Google Calendar, click on the task icon again, and then there's the drop-down at the bottom that says completed. So you can see what tasks you've completed. Next, under Create, I can see this appointment schedule option. I'll click on this. I need to set up the details and my availability here. First, I'll add a title for the appointment page. I'll select the meeting duration to 30 minutes. Now, under General Availability, I need to set my availability. First, I'll select 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Then I'll select another time for the day. Here, I'll select 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. I created two different slots for my schedule. Now I'll copy the same time for all the other days of the week. You see, all the days are copied the same time. Here, under scheduling window, I'll make the advance appointment to 30 days. And I'll make the minimum time to 12 hours. So I'll have enough time to prepare for the meeting. Under adjusted availability, you can adjust the custom availability for certain dates. Like for July 17, I'll set the availability for 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. only. This will not affect the other date. Under book appointment settings, you can set a buffer time and the maximum number of bookings can be made per day. I'll set the buffer time to 15 minutes. And I'll change the maximum bookings per day to 3. Under calendar, check for availability. You can connect multiple calendars. It will block the busy times from booking an appointment. I'll select a color here. This is optional. And I'll click on next. Here, you need to select a meeting location. Currently, it has three options, Google Meet, in-person meetings, and phone calls. If you're a person who likes meetings on Zoom, you can integrate the Zoom meeting scheduling option here. Then you will see the option to create Zoom meetings from the Google Calendar here in this list. For now, I'll select Google Meet. I'll add a sample description here. This is important. Booking form. Here, it has a first name, last name, and email. I want to add another field, that is phone number. Add item, and I want to add a custom field here. Here, I'll add a custom field. I'll make it required. Add item. The custom field will help you to prepare for the meeting. The last setting, booking confirmation and reminders. Here, you see the calendar invitation is already selected. When the meeting is booked, the person will receive a calendar invite with the Google Meet links. As I have selected the Google Meet as the video conference option, now I'll save the setting. You can see the pop-up for the appointment schedule we just created. Let's see what the booking page looks like. Click on this booking page. 
I'll click on this, see what others see. So this is your final booking page. Here you see people can select a date and a time for the date and then they need to fill in the details. We will try that in a moment. Now we need to get the link to share. Click on the share button and here's the link. Copy this link and share this with people you want to. Besides, you can embed this appointment schedule link as a button on your website. On this website embed option, select the bottom pop-up. Select a color for the button. Here you can see the preview of the button and copy the code. Now let's see how to embed this on a website. I want to embed it on the sidebar here on this demo website. So I'll open the settings and select the HTML widget here. I'll move this widget to the top and I'll paste the code here. Let's see how the button looks like. So here is a book appointment button. Now I'll publish all the changes and refresh the page here. Here's the button. When I click on the button, it opens a nice pop-up of the booking page. And you can add the button anywhere on the website. You just need to embed the code. Let's try to book an appointment here. I'll quickly select a date. I'll select a time and I'll fill in the details. I'll add a message. So the form is filled. Now I'll click on this book button. The booking is confirmed and an email has sent to the email address. And I have received a confirmation because I have booked the meeting with this email account. The email has Google Meet link. I can join the meeting using this button here. Let's see on the other side. And here you can see I have received an email on the Google Calendar account as well. And that's how you can book appointment on Google Calendar. Using these tabs, you can leverage Google Calendar to manage appointment bookings similarly to how you would use Calendly. It requires a bit more manual setup and maintenance, but it can be a cost-effective alternative. That's it. If you have further questions, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Before we end this video, let me introduce to you Webinar Loop. Run live, on-demand, scheduled, and webinar replays with hands-free automation and breakthrough sales getting features. No hosting required, dozens of ready templates, engagement and sales boosters. Never seen before engagement and sales boosting technology. Full screen lifelike experience, call to action with clickable buttons, info boxes and engaging tidbits. Live polls on webinars, surveys on webinars, infographics and ads on webinars. Webinar Loop is the only webinar marketing system you will ever need. So what are you waiting for? Get Webinar Loop now. Just go to getwebinarloop.in. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and ring that notification bell. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.